Well, hello, YouTubers. It's uh, Hot Rod Paul again. Uh, just some updates on plastic welding. Uh, today I've got I got stuck into it again today, and yesterday I was at it, focusing mainly on uh, repairing the cracks in the glove box and instrument cluster of the AMC Hornet. Uh, what I have in front of us is the glove box surround. It's upside down at the moment, <laughs> but I just wanted to show you, um, I deliberately used um, some red cable ties uh, to show you some of the reinforcing work that I've done on these. Uh, if you have a look at the thickness of these instrument clusters, they're, they're very, very thin. They're about two millimetres to two and a half mil thick. And what, what happens is that you generally get uh, stress cracks along the main edges uh, and uh, and where where people uh, or where the factory bolt holes are you'll find that because of misalignment that the bolts are, are twice as wide the holes and you'll find uh, uh, stress cracks all the way along in these seams and over here uh, along there so um, Another typical thing, if your car is from a hot climate, the AMC uh, Gremlins and Hornets, you'll find that the dash pads, if not kept well, will warp. And then you find that the rest of your cluster and also um, instrument bezels will warp. And it looks horrible, really, really horrible. Um, so what I'm focusing on at the moment is repairing, filling in all the holes that shouldn't be there and holes that are there but I'm not convinced they're the right size so I've filled them in and the next step will be to sand them back uh, so what we can have a look at is the filling that I've done here because this area breaks or is very very fragile I've doubled the thickness of that and you really can't bend it it's that solid um, the same on this side and this is the lug under the uh, that's under the dash so you have to but typically what happens is they break off and then you do see them okay so I will be sanding these back I've got to get a hot air gun my hot air gun uh, it failed a while ago because one of the steps that I'm going to do is to get these absolutely straight but as what I have noticed as I repaired or have repaired the cracks around each of the screw holes um, from just typical tightening each crack by crack that cluster became a lot straighter excuse the workbench <laughs> so here is the instrument cluster now this instrument cluster that I began working on and showing uh, fellow YouTubers this the other day when I introduced plastic welding, um, I focused on uh, mainly filling in the holes uh, up here, along there, along there and there. And this pit did not exist. So this whole bit here was from there down to there missing totally missing uh, so what I've done is build that up and and it's that tough okay I'm not finished with this yet I just did a rough sand and paint on it to see what it would lo look like I've got to go back over it with 1200 one of the other things that I've done with this dash as well is my fittings finally came in and I was able to wire up this area here and I've wired the clock looking at the schematic um, the difference between the Australian versions and the US version is that the Australian version the clock doesn't come in through this six pin fitting here so what I've done is just wire it up like the US version because it just uh, isolates any positive wires that uh, are floating around behind the dash on their own and that makes it nice and secure um, as well um, so that, 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 that dash is not far off now getting put back 
But if I turn it over, if we have a look at the dash, from a, a bit of a distance, we'll see the dash is complete. Uh, the the uh, sag in the middle is probably half of what it originally was. And so heating that up, I was able to uh, I was able to straighten it out. Um, what else? What else have I learned that I can share with you? Um, well, the only other thing that I've done is with the clock. I pulled the clock apart the other night and painted the hands, the hand uh, uh, red. Um, I found out that there's this the smallest, smallest of uh, of hex head uh, screws in there or nut and everything else is looking fine. The only reason I'm pursuing with this or persisting is these dashes are just non-existent and instead of throwing it out you've got to fix them um, uh, and I, I just I'm not one to have a ratty looking dash in the car so I'm at least attempting to fix these things um, and I have used these processes before in um, uh, other vehicles that I've worked on. So all of that will be getting rubbed back again after I've straightened the top and uh, the flat black will be put on there and a bit of silver and that will finish it off. Uh, what else? No, that's that's really that's really about it. Uh, you can use any colour. The thick cable ties, uh, e.g. Uh, where are we? I've got two different types. We've got on the right there, we have the 10mm wide versus the 3mm wide cable tie. What I have found is that the 3mm cable tie behaves a lot more like solder. And for areas where you're filling in crevices, it's a lot easier to use. So if you see the, the one on the far right there that the white one, which is um, when it's molten, it's clear. And I've been using that to fill in uh, small crevices and holes from the top. And then I use the black one, if I'm worried about colour, filling in from the top. So that's just a little bit of news. All right then, thanks very much. And I'll upload this to, uh, to YouTube. Thank you.